Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Welcome. Today I'm going to start kind of backwards. I'm going to show you how I layer this t-shirt or actually what I did it on with some blue jean material because I don't have any more t-shirts. So I'm just going to make it into another one of those no so little bags. But isn't it cute? Look up on my screen uh, how it looks on a um, little onesie. Cute as can be. Here's the thing. If you want to hurry up and go through and get to where I show you how to actually create it in Design Space and in Silhouette Business Edition, um, you can skip ahead to minute 18 and 30 seconds. But if you want to watch how I layer the different layers of vinyl <clears throat> and the rhinestones, stay tuned and watch right here. So let's get started. Okay, this part of the video is going to show how I go ahead and put these things that I've cut out out of the flock onto my blue jean leg uh, to, because I'm going to make this into another one of those bags that you don't have to sew. And I'll have a link to that up above. So the first thing I will show you is I have all of my pieces cut out, cracker, fire, little, and for this one, I am going to show you how to put the bling on here with the rhinestones. But of course, if you don't have Silhouette Business Edition for your Cricut machine, you probably won't be able to do this. So let me move this out of the way and let me show you how I put the rhinestones in this. Okay, because I'm going the cheap seat way in that I'm using just regular flock to cut my template. This is not the sticky flock, which is a little more expensive. I have to make the back of this sticky. So I'm going to use this Sulky KK2000. I worked at a quilt shop. I got it there. I would imagine any kind of temporary spray adhesive would work. So I'm just going to spray a little bit of this on here and hopefully not get it over everything. So what I'm going to do is turn my little tray over that I use to do my rhinestones. I'll turn it upside down and I'll just spray this a little bit. Can you hear it's just little teeny tiny bursts? That's it, that's probably all I need. So then what I'm gonna do is turn this back over and simply put my template right in the center and press it down. So this was from the Dollar Tree, a buck for my little station that I used to work in. The other things that I have are this little tool here and you can do the cheap seat way and try to use those little brushes from Michaels and those kind of places but I like this one because it has an angled handle. It makes it a little bit easier. The other thing I got from the Dollar Tree was this, that I can scoop up all the rest of my rhinestones when I'm all done and put them back in the container. And one more thing I got was some of the, were some of these containers from the Dollar Tree that I keep my crystals in. Now I didn't open these yet, they're brand new. So I'm gonna open them and just dump them right in here. And I have different colors. So the way they come labeled, it tells what color it is and what size it is. And I just, it's a sticker. So I just put it on the top of this. So the first thing you do is you just dump out a bunch of rhinestones, more than what you think you need, like that. And you just take this brush and just go around and around, not really paying any attention to what you're doing. And I hear my uh, easy press is warmed up over there. So I can do like that around and around and I'll pull these off and see how well I got them so far. See what I need to redo. And I shouldn't have to put any of these in here by hand. I should be able to do them all with this little brush. Just knocked one out accidentally. Okay, I've got one out here. So I just bring a little pile over and go around and around and again and that should fill that one up and it did. Okay, and I've got the one out over here that I knew about. Circle around and it's filled. So this side is all done. And I've got one missing over here. So around and around and not done yet. <laughs> around and around and around we go. This flock is not probably as thick as the kind that you can get, that you buy for this purpose, but it's a lot cheaper. So that's why I've used it. Okay, so that's all done and I'm looking very carefully to make sure that there aren't any that are upside down or, you know, uh, doubled or missing. 
then I'm going to take all my rhinestones and move them off to the side. And actually what I like to do is I like to move them to the top and the bottom like this so they're way off. And this little pop, this little um, cookie sheet really comes in handy with this nice edge because then my rhinestones don't fall off. And it's so cheap at just a dollar and it's reusable forever and ever. So there we go. There's that. And then the next thing I do is I get my transfer tape. This is a different kind of transfer tape. This is not the same kind of stuff that we can use. This is a special transfer tape that you'll need to buy. It's not very expensive at all. Uh, but this one can be heated and it won't mess up or melt. So I'm not sure if I have a big enough piece. I'm hoping I do. I do. Yay. And I don't want to get in these rhinestones down here. So I'm just going to press this on here now. And I've used this piece of transfer tape a lot. So I'm still hoping that it's sticky enough to pick up all of my rhinestones and be ready to go. Let's see. Let's start this guy just to make sure that he's going to keep going the way he should. Okay, I missed some rhinestones there. And it's not a big deal. If you miss a rhinestone, like when I'm pulling this up, if one doesn't come up, all I do is push this back down until he comes up. And there was one more that didn't come up. Okay, there we go. We got all the rhinestones ready. And I'm going to put this over here. And I'm going to move my cookie sheet. Ooh, be careful with it. Since they are from the Dollar Tree, they kind of flip-flop around like that, so just be careful. All right, so now we have this. And the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to come over here, and I notice there's something I need to fix, and I bet I can't tear this. I've got to get some scissors, because this little piece right here on the red, that little red piece, goes on top of the uh, rocket on fire. So I need to get some scissors. Oh, <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to cut that part off that goes with the word fire. And I think, <clears throat> excuse me, this goes little fire cracker. And then I'll have these, and I hope I didn't make them too wide. Nope, perfect. Great. Super duper. All right, so the first thing I'm going to put on is the word little. Right about here, I guess. I always just eyeball everything. I'm not. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have this actually have this card that tells me for flock, I do it at 320 degrees. So I'm going to take this over here for my flock and just press this on here for now. And I'm just going to do it for a little short time because I am going to come back and do it again. So let's see if that's enough. Nope, not quite. And I did notice something that happened here. Okay, there we go. All right, let's try that again. Okay, that may be enough. And I have a little bit of a mess up right here where my L is. And the reason being is that I started to weed out the wrong piece when I was doing my weeding. So it wasn't because of the file or anything. It was user error. So this is supposed to be a cold peel. So I need to wait for it to cool off a bit before I try to take it off. And I'm cheating a little bit because I know I'm going to go slowly and I'm going to be doing this some more, so it should be fine. There we go. Little. Cool. Now the word fire. And this time, since I am uh, putting it on top of another piece, I'm going to c cover it with my Teflon sheet. And I'm able to angle this in here. If I was not, I would probably be using one of those foam pads that I've shown you about before, the T pads, because of these lumps on the seams right here. But I'm able to angle my easy press so that's not a problem. So I'm going to let that cool off for a little bit.
it's really hot. <laughs> my hands are cold, that's why I'm trying to put my hands on it to chill it off a little bit. So let's see if I can get this off by cheating just a little bit. I don't want it to pull up. Carefully, carefully, slowly. Little fi fire. Uh oh, that one came up, son of a gun. Let's see if I can do this side. Okay, there we go, fire. And now I'll put the word cracker on here. And actually at the same time, I could put this red part on probably on the word fire. So let's see which way does it go. I guess it goes just like that. Little fire cracker. So once again, I'll put my Teflon sheet down. And this time I think I'll do it for the full, uh, I think it's 20 seconds, let me double check. I'll do 15. Okay. And I am gonna let it cool this time. And then if I look on this cheat sheet again, uh, well actually it doesn't tell me on this one. Oh yes it does, rhinestones. For the SS10, and that's the size that I'm using right here, it says that I'm supposed to do 335 degrees for 15 seconds. And you get this card if you order from TRW. I'm not affiliated with them, but that's where I've gotten my rhinestones. Um, and I'll have the link down below for you if you want to buy some rhinestones there and you get a nice card like this. It has all kind of heat transfer um, dimension or stuff information for Caesar vinyl, then on the other side for the rhinestones. So again, I need to change then my temperature. I said to for the SS10 335. So I'm going to come over to here in my heat press, which you really can't see, and I'm going to hit the little temperature button and hit the up arrow to make it say three. Oops, temperature up. Oh, I got to stop that. Temperature. Okay, once it's flashing, you can hit the up button and I need to change it to 335. Okay. I'm gonna let that heat up until it rings or it beeps and this is getting nice and cool. So it's just about ready for me to peel it. Beautiful. Okay, this is really cute, you guys. So the next thing I'm going to do now is put the rhinestones on here. And as I said, if you don't have the business edition and weren't able to cut the rhinestones, you will have the stars and you can cut those and put them on. I need to stand up because this makes a glare so I can see where I'm placing them. There, I like that right there. And since this paper doesn't totally cover my design, I will cover it again with my Teflon sheet. And again, it says to do this for 15 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and angle this in here so I get it well and get the timer. Okay. Let's see how that's gonna look. Okay, I must not have had it over here well enough. So let me try that again. That rhinestone did not stick. And after I do it on this side, what I'll do is I'll turn it inside out to make sure I get everything. And I have a feeling maybe that I probably should have used that pad inside of here and that's probably why my rhinestone didn't stick because there is a big bulky seam right over here, not right near where my rhinestones are. So that could be the issue. Next time, I will make sure I use the pad. Okay, that felt hot over there. Perfect. Oh, how cute is this? Oh, I don't know if you can see the rhinestones blinging away. It's really cute. And wouldn't that be cute on a child's shirt or a onesie? So cute. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna let this cool off for a second, a few seconds, and then what I'm going to do, actually, while I let that cool off, I'll show you why I like to use this little, um, what's it called? 
dust pan because <laughs> here's what I do. I'm sure I don't lose any. I act like I act like these things are gold, but I really like them. So I don't want to lose any. So what I do is, well, I can take this thing off of here now and save it if I want to make another shirt. This is reusable again and again. That's what's so fabulous about doing these rhinestone things, especially if you make something really cool. It's reusable again and again and again. It's your template. So what I'll do is I'll just move all of these rhinestones kind of into the center a little bit. Not all of them. I'll just start like this. And then just bring in my little dust pan. And it's nice because it has like a little rubber edge on it. And I just dust pan these right up into here. Otherwise I'd be here all day trying to pick them up. Then I bring this on top in case I drop any. And just go down here and they just go down this little trough right here. Quite nicely. And I don't lose any of my pieces of gold. <laughs> okay, there's that. They do sell a tool similar to this at the TRW or the Rhinestone World, but I think it's like $6. So I said, well, I'll just check and see if they have anything at the dollar store. And sure enough, that was a buck. It did come with a brush too, but you know, it won't be useful for what I'm doing here. Now in between uses, I probably would wipe this off because it is sticky a little bit from um, my sticky stuff that I've used. Just to keep it from getting really messy. Clean it off with maybe a baby wipe or something. Or if you're near a sink, you know, just wash it under some cold water. And I really like doing bling. I think it just adds a little something to everything. You've seen my cup, haven't you? My mug that I use with the bling on it. Oh my gosh, I just love that thing. I'm going to make my friends some. You see these mugs right here? I put some vinyl on here, but I think I'm going to take that off if I can, but I may not be able to. But I have three other ones yet that I haven't done, and I think I'm going to put their, um, these are from the Goodwill store. And that soap smells so good. Soap from the Goodwill store. <laughs> ah, anyway, I'm going to put their uh, monograms on there. So let me finish picking these up. And, you know, if you don't want to use the brush, you can also use your fingers to move them around a bit. Okay, this should be the last little bit. And then I'll be ready to show you how the little um, beginnings of my no-so bag has turned out. Okay, so bring this back over here again. And just go like this and help them into the little trough. And into my container from the dollar store where they will be kept very nicely. So I see there's a few more here, and these I can just kind of pick up with my finger by pushing my finger into them, and they kind of stick. And that's it. Before I do anything else, I'll make sure I close this up. I don't want to lose anybody. And move this over this way. And here again is our very cute little beginning of the bag, of the no sew bag. So again, like I said, what I would do now is turn this thing inside out, and put the part with the rhinestones towards the top and just give it another press for 15 seconds. And that is it. Like I said, you could do this on a bag. You could do this on a t-shirt. You could do it, hmm, not sure, on lots of things. So that's good enough right there. And you can see kind of like where you can almost see an outline. Maybe you can't, but I can, of where the rhinestones are there. I can turn it right back, right side out. Okay, here we are again at the site where you can get this free SVG that's so to totally cute. And all you do is come here, and the link is down below the video in the About part. And you'll just come down here to where it keep coming down, scrolling down. Let me get rid of this advertisement. Scroll down. And she asks that you please share the post before you download. So I'm sharing this post with you guys so you'll have it. And if you decide to use this, then maybe you can share it somewhere. Also, I'd appreciate it if you would share, you know, our YouTube channel or our Facebook group or something like that. I'm just trying to get the word out that we have classes 
we have all kind of interesting learning situations going on. So anyway, so all you'll need to do then is just come here where it says printable PDF, or not printable PDF, right here. It says download. So I would click on download. And then it's going to download right, let me get rid of these, download. And there it is, it says little firecracker zip. So I would double click on that to open that. And I've already done this, so I'm not going to do it again, but this is how it first comes in. And it's a zipped file. And we need to come up here and say extract all, at least in Windows 10, extract all. And I would click on that. And whatever it comes up as right here, I save it like this because all of my things are saved to my download folder and it just is convenient. And I would just go extract. I'm not going to do that, like I said, because I've already done it. So I'm going to cancel this and get rid of these things. And then I'm going to come over to Cricut Design Space. So after I've extracted everything, I will go to Upload. Upload an image, browse, and I'm going to find that download folder. And it was Little Firecracker, I believe it was. Little, there it is, Little Firecracker right here. So I'm going to double click on that to open it. And I've got to open up this folder as well. Now look at all these folders that are inside of here. The only one that we are concerned about here is the one that says SVG. It's an SVG file. That means it's already ready to cut and it's a scalable vector graphic, which you don't need to know that. Just click on the SVG to open it. Okay, there it is. Alrighty, so it says little firecracker and I could put some tags in here if I want to and I'll just say save. Now, while I'm starting to do this part for you, I noticed that I forgot a part on my um, project that I made and I'll show you what it is in just a second. So you're going to highlight this by clicking on it and then you just come over here to the very right hand side and say insert images. Now what I forgot to do on mine were these two white pieces here and the blue. So mine was all black other than two red stripes. All right so here it is in Cricut Design Space and this comes in beautifully. Um, as I said if you don't have the business edition, you won't be able to put the rhinestone bling, but you can use these stars instead. So depending on when you, whether you want to use bling, you can watch the next section of this after this part's over. But the first thing I'll need to do here is to look at the size of it. It's 10 inches wide by 10 and some inches tall. That's going to be too tall for my baby onesie or my kid's shirt. I might like it that big or even bigger if I were putting it on the back of a blue jean jacket or something like that. That'd be cute on the back of a kid's blue jean jacket. But anyway, so what I would do is I would either uh, come up here if I know exactly what size I want it to be, make sure the lock is locked and just change this up here. I could change it to maybe five inches and hit enter on my keyboard and it changes everything proportionately or I could have just grabbed on this little double-headed arrow here and grabbed it and changed the size. Either way works. So as simple as this is for Cricut Design Space, all we have to do now is go to Make It. And it's already separated out into the mats. There's the white pieces that I forgot to cut. There's the black. The light blue of the stars. There's that. And two different colors of red. I'm not sure why that needs to be like that. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Let's go back for a second. And uh oh, look at this. This is crazy. So let's cancel this and go back. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to where it says sync. I'm going to click on that. And notice here there are two different colors of red. I don't want to do two colors of red. I'm going to change it so all the red is the same color. So what I do is I take my little mouse and grab it on this color, whichever one I want to change. See that? And I'm just going to drag it down to this color that I want it to be. And now those stars are the same color. So I only have one color of red now. So that's good. 
The other thing is, let's go back to the Layers panel. And I need to attach all of this because, again, let's go look at the word Cracker. Let's go to Make It. And let's go to the red one because that's where the word Cracker was. And look at this. It's crazy, right? That's not the way we want it to be. So let's cancel. And when we want this, when we when this cuts, we want it to cut in order so that we can weed it and just put it right on. So what you want to do is to just grab the same colors and attach them. So I can't do it right now. So I have to ungroup. And then I'm going to grab all of the red, excuse me, hold down my shift key, grab that red star. You know what? I think the stars are grouped together. So I can't just grab one star yet. I have to ungroup the stars. So now I can grab all of the red in the text, hold down my shift key, and grab the red, st grab all the red. And I'm actually going to come over here and hold down my shift key and grab these over here in the layers panel. It's easier. So now I have all of these red pieces selected. Oh, oh, I forgot a couple, right? That one and that one. Hmm. All right, that's not going to work either because that is grouped together. So I'm going to have to ungroup one more thing. Now let's check it out. So I'm going to grab the red text. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to come over here to the layers panel and grab this red star and grab this red star. And where are those little red pieces I need? These two red pieces here as well. So everything should be highlighted that's red. And I actually can go to weld. Because they're all the same color, that is fine. All right. So let's look and see now what we have. Let's go down to the red and see if that worked. Sure enough, look at that. Perfect. Let's see how this looks. Okay, fire, it's I-R-E-F. That's not right either. So let's cancel this. And again, we're going to have to do the same thing. We're going to come to this right here and hold down my shift key. And I'm going to see if I can grab the little rocket. Yep, I got it. So I have these things selected over here in the layers panel. All of the black things, let's double check. Everything that's black is selected. So I'm going to say weld. Okay, that's fine. That just came over top of that, so that is fine. Let's go look and see how it looks when we make it. Okay, now we have, that's fine. And F-I-R-E is good. The stars are fine, but we might want to make them stay a certain place as well as these, right? So let's fix those other ones. So let's cancel this again. And let's uh, take this blue word and this blue top. Now all of that Oh God, so I don't want all of that. I just want the blue top. So again, I'm going to come over to the layers panel, grab the blue triangle, which is the top of the firecracker, hold down my shift key and grab the word little. And let's see, did it get it? Yes. So it got the word little and it got one of the blue stars. We need to get these other blue stars. And let's see if we got everything that's the darker blue. Yep. And now we can weld. Okay, there we got something weird there, right? I'm not sure how I did that. So let's check this out again. I'm using the back to go back. Whoops, one too many. Let's go forward. All right, so what we want, we want this blue triangle. So I'm going to grab that over here in the layers panel, hold down my shift key, grab this star and this star and this star and the word little. And I'm going to weld all of that. 
All right, the other things that we might want to weld together, we can do this if we want to. We can grab both of these white pieces and either weld or attach if we want them to stay in proper order. Okay, I'm just about ready to be done, except for I did not take the light blue ones together, holding down my shift key. And make sure I just have light blue and I have something else over here. So I'm going to get the light blue star, hold down my shift key and get the other light blue star. And I'm just going to attach them. All right, so now we're ready to make it. When we go to make it, the white is perfect. The black is coming in just as we want, F-I-R-E. The blue stars are spaced properly. This is spaced properly for the rocket under here. And here's Cracker. So we are ready to go. I would just continue and select my machine and uh, make it heat transfer vinyl. And of course, I would make sure to mirror everything because it is heat transfer vinyl. All right, so that's what we do in Cricut. If you're interested to see how to do the rhinestones quickly in Silhouette, let's click over to there. I've already opened this up in Silhouette. And again, you may, you can use this for your Cricut machine. Not a problem, any machine can use this. So here we go. So the first thing that I would do is just like any other time is I would just right click on this and say ungroup. Because what I wanna do is I wanna get rid of these stars because I don't want them. I'm just gonna delete them. I'm not gonna use them at all in this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the rhinestone area because I want to make the sparkles like they're firecrackers, right? So I'm in business edition right now and you can also do this in, no, I'm actually in designer edition and you can also do this in business edition. So what I'm going to do now, oopsie, I didn't want to change that. Let's group this back together. Right click and group. Okay, let's move this over. So I'm going to come down here to the rhinestone tool. It's way down here where this little triangle is. It's going to pop on out. There's the rhinestone tool. And what I'm going to use is the freehand rhinestone tool because I'm going to draw my own um, little rhinestones. So I'm going to use the 10SS style. So I'm going to err size, click on that. And I'm, so I'm going to come down here again where it says freehand, and I'm just going to draw a freehand rhinestone. And maybe another one like this. And of course, you can draw these however you want to. Every time you hit freehand, you can draw another line. So that's just like that. That's perfect. I could leave them just like that if I want to. And what I could do if I wanted was to grab the first one, hold down my shift key, and grab the other two and right click and say copy and then right click and say paste so we have a second version of it and I'm going to say uh, right click and I'm going to say flip horizontally so then these guys are all flipped horizontally and I'm going to group these like that just like that and then if I wanted to, what I can do is grab all of this and move it over so it's on my screen better. And I do need to make it smaller, right? Because it's too large for the kid's uh, shirt. And again, I could come up here to the top and change its width and its height. And right up here. Another thing I see that happened, and I can leave it like this if I want to. See that rhinestone that went kind of like curling off? I could leave it like that if I want to. Or what I could do is just click on that line of rhinestones right there and say release rhinestones. And notice that puts a box, let me zoom in so you can see it, around every single one of those rhinestones in this line, which means, whoops, as soon as I click off and click back on, I can move it however I want to. So I can do the same thing with this one. Release rhinestones. And I can make these go however I want to. Suppose I didn't want them way over there. Or down like that. And of course if I want them closer together or want to add another one, I just can click on this one, hold down my Alt key, and grab it. And that makes a duplicate. Click on this one, hold down my Alt key, click, and add another. 
So let's scroll back out and let's see how that looks. And again, the nice thing about this, remember if you scroll way in in this program and you can't see everything, just come up here and hit this button right here that says Fit to Window and it makes it automatically fit to the window. So what I might be wanting to do is to click on these and delete these over here. In case I want to go ahead, whoops, I just moved that guy and didn't want to. Let me move this out of the way. If I want to now look at those rhinestones. I think they're a little close together. They're touching. I want to move him over a little bit. All right, then I can grab all of it and just say group. And if I want to, I can right click and say duplicate. There's my duplicate. And then I can right click again and say flip horizontally. So that's the ones that go on the other side. And now just hit that button, brings it all front and center again. Move this out, move this in. And I'm going rather quickly here, but those of you who have the business edition, you know how much fun we have and how slowly we go through these classes um, in our Patreon class. And those of you who are thinking about getting um, this edition for Cricut or even for your silhouette machine, please check it out. Join us over on Patreon.com. Try it for one month. Five dollars gets you five classes. And I promise if you ask anybody in any of my Facebook groups what they think of my classes, I'm thinking they'll give you a good review. <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much for joining me. Oh, I forgot to show you guys. So if you were doing this in a silhouette and you had a cameo, the next thing you would do is go over here to send. So look, this shows everything that's going to be cut. Okay, it shows everything is going to be cut. And now what I want to do, though, is I'm going to come over here to fill. Because I want these things to cut depending on what color they are. So the, I'm going to uncheck all of these so that makes nothing. There's nothing that's going to cut. And then I can come back up here and click these. And so the first thing that's going to cut is the black stuff. Well, I need to ungroup this. And I can take my black pieces up here. Okay, so here's my black. That's all that's going to cut out uh, the black outline of my um, vinyl. The next thing that I could do if I wanted to is I could take this blue one and put a piece of blue vinyl right up here in the upper right hand corner of my mat. And maybe down in the lower left hand corner I want to put the red. Okay, I want to group these rhinestones together so they stay at the same place. Group. And maybe I want to put them right down here and I can cut them here. So I can cut all these things at the same time. Here's the neat thing about uh, Silhouette is if I wanted to cut the black pieces out of heat transfer flock, I have that checked here. Let's imagine over here I am putting glitter. I can come right here and change this and say I want it to be um, heat transfer glitter. So when it starts to cut that, it's going to change the settings before it does it to heat transfer glitter. Okay, if the blue, if I wanted the blue to be that. Oops, I made the black that because I still had it selected. But you get the idea. So then the next thing I would do is I would just go to send and it would send it to my machine and cut it. It would cut this one in whatever I have selected over here. It would cut this one in whatever um, fabric or whatever type of vinyl I have here and I would have it selected here. And there is the finished product. So all I have to do now is finish my no so little bag and I think it is super duper cute. So thanks a lot for joining me you guys. If you like my videos please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and also share it with your friends and people in other groups that are trying to learn how to use Cricut Design Space or Silhouette software. I love using both of them and don't forget we can use the Silhouette software for our Cricut machines and that enables us to do so much more with our Cricut machines. We do it, we uh, c construct something or design something in Silhouette software and we bring it over into Cricut Design Space and use it there. So again, thanks for joining me. Check out my links below. Bye-bye.